Big day in New York City for the cannabis business. Uh, we're getting the first legal store opening today. Uh, this pet pot shop aims for $1 million a year in revenue. So big day here in New York City for the cannabis folks. Ken Shea, he's uh, Bloomberg Intelligence. He covers the uh, all the consumer stuff, including cannabis for Bloomberg Intelligence. He joins us via Zoom. And Whitney Beatty, Josephine and Billy's Cannabis Speakeasy joins us via Zoom from Los Angeles. Whitney, love to get with you first here. All right, we'll go to Ken Shea first because he is our rock, so rock star as it relates to kind of <laughs> covering the business of cannabis. Ken, how big is this for New York City, um, you know, getting its first legal pot shop and kind of how do you think that's going to evolve in, in New York? Yeah, hi, Paul. Happy holidays. Great to see you again. Um, it is really a big deal. I mean, New York is a, a huge market. It's a highly visible market. And I think a lot of other populous um, areas in the United States that haven't legalized are going to be watching this closely to see how it pulls it off, how it does. Um, New York's a large market, and it has high hopes, and no pun intended. It looks to its neighbor, New Jersey. New Jersey, you know, legalized recreational only back in April. It's already up to a $1 billion run rate wow. in sales. New York's got twice the population. So you, you put the math together and you have a really big industry out of the gate. The demand is gonna be there. It's, this product's been around a long time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, all eyes are on New York. It's one of the, the most visible market Ken. to really uh, get a sense of what's going on. You do some great analysis for us, and we always love it that sort of bringing together some of the issues that perhaps still the spending bill didn't have the marijuana banking element to it. And we saw a lot of pot stocks fall on the back of that, that many still say to really grow this industry, they need to be able to get bank loans. They need to be able to get a more easier access to capital. But I'm interested in your perspective of why we've already seen the ability when I walk outside of Bloomberg to cross the, store, cross the, cross the street, and I can go and get edibles. I can go and buy certain marijuana-related food and consumption. What is that store doing now? And why has it been able to do that ahead of this sort of legalization? Well, New York is, is taking a different approach, uh, put it that way, than many markets in, in allowing, you know, the social justice theme to allow uh, some flexibility, let me put it that way, to some operators that won't exist in, in many other markets. And that's going to at the consternation of the legal operators. You know, legal operators saying, look, we're paying all these taxes. We're going jumping through all these hoops. We're doing a lot of things here. Help us out by enforcing the laws on the books that, you know, you, you can't have someone down the street selling it uh, legally and avoiding taxes if you're going, if the regulated uh, entities are, are going to compete well. So that's, that's really going to be a key issue going forward. And it also may... Uh, you know, also discourage some other mm -hmm. big entities from getting into the New York, New York market until they enforce those rules.